Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm sitting on the floor and I decided to make another video. Oh, I just got home from work. It's Black Friday week. It's not a day anymore, it's a week. And it's been hectic and I've been dealing with a lot of BS. I really do love being a bookseller. Truly, I, I enjoy retail as a job, but I'm, I'm done right now. <laughs> but I still really wanted to get something filmed for my Sunday upload. So in order for that to happen, it's, it's the floor for me today. But it does mean you guys get to see some background books that you don't normally see, so that's fun for you, right? Huh? Anyways. This is just gonna be a quick little video. I always say that and then the video is like an hour long, but it's gonna be a quick little video. I just wanna show you all of the books that I accumulated in the month of November. You've already seen a ton of them. I've been doing a lot of like, I went to this event and I got these books, look, posts and videos already. So I'm sorry if I'm showing books that you've already seen. I'm gonna chew, chew my best, do my best to skip over the ones that I've featured before. I'm so out of it, I'm forgetting to like look at the camera. <laughs> Hi, it's me, I'm on the floor. Let's get started. I skipped book of the month this month, so no book of the month unboxing for us. Uh, the November books just weren't interesting to me. I've come to a decision that if the December books are also just not doing it for me, I'm gonna cancel that subscription. Goodbye book of the month. It's been real. I am interested in trying out some other uh, subscription boxes. A lot of them are really expensive though, or have a wait list like the Broken Binding. So uh, if you know any like not crazy expensive fantasy or horror or science fiction book boxes, not young adult boxes, let me know down below, please. Like I, I, I don't really want to try a Luma Crate or Fairy Loot. Uh, but I'm open to other things. So skipping book of the month, I'm gonna take you right into my highly anticipated releases of November. <gasps> I'm not gonna dwell on it because you already know. I got Fourth Wing, the holiday special, and I got Iron Flame, the sequel to Fourth Wing. Pretty. We've looked at these already. Moving on. A book that was released on the exact same day as Fourth Wing and Iron Flame that I'm more excited for is Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry. This is the sequel to Legends and Lattes, which was one of my absolute favorite reads of last year. And I've been waiting for this one. It's such a cozy, sweet little fantasy, but it's sapphic and it's kind of brutal and it's really great for Dungeons and Dragons players. Dungeons and Dragons players. Let me enunciate. Anyways, this is a prequel to Legends and Lattes, and I'm really excited to read it. Another big release that I was really excited for was Traitor of Red Winter by Ed McDonald. This is the direct sequel to Daughter of Red Winter. I have a UK edition here, that's why it looks a little different than you Americans and Canadians might have seen it with the red cover. So they don't look great together, I'll be honest. I wish I had the red one, and then, then they would match a bit better. But I love these covers. I think they're really pretty and I am happy. I always end the sentence with, and I'm excited to read it. I am, but like, come on, be creative. Okay, sorry I clap so much. I'm so aggressive today. Let's do a roundup of all of the arcs I received this month. Holy moly. I went to a bunch of publisher events for work and they are just like, throwing arcs at you left and right. So I have a lot of arcs. Hold on, they're over here. Don't look. It's a surprise. Oh, I dropped them all on the floor. <laughs> okay, I'm okay, I'm back. So right out of the gate, let's talk about two that I don't care about. <laughs> I am so appreciative to the publisher for giving me these, but I, I'm not a romance reader, so I'm not really interested into how to end a love story. What did I just say? I'm not really interested in How to End a Love Story by Yulin Kuang. Um, what I do know is she is the showrunner, I, I don't know if that's the word, of Emily Henry's TV shows that are coming out. So if you're a fan of Emily Henry, Emily herself says this book's fantastic uh, and it and is something like she would have written. So it's receiving a lot of advanced praise. It's coming out April next year, 2024. Then there is The Phoenix Crown, which is a joint, written, jointly written book, thank you, by Kate Quinn and Janie Chang. 
Kate Quinn writes a lot of spy World War II thrillers. This is set in San Francisco 1906. It is about the intertwined lives of two wronged women spanning from the chaos of San Francisco Earth of the San Francisco earthquake to the glittering palaces of Versailles. And this is also out February 2024. I was also given The New Couple in 5B. No, this is not by Lucy Foley, despite the fact that it looks exactly like all of Lucy Foley's books. It's by Lisa Unger. A couple inherits an apartment with a spine-tingling past in, its, in this haunting and propulsive thriller. I'm so sorry I can't talk today. I'm not even gonna redo it though. I'm keeping it in. I'm tired. <laughs> one that I'm kind of excited for, although it is a sequel and I have not yet read the first one, the secret, secret, ah, sequel to Everyone in My Family Has Killed Somebody by Benjamin Stevenson is coming out. It's called Everyone on This Train is a Suspect and it's a direct follow-up to that last one. The main character has written a book and is going to a, a, an author event hosted on a train and then there is a murder. It's very Agatha Christie. I also have arcs for some books that are actually already out, but I just have them. Um, Ken Follett's new book, The Armor of Light, which came out in September, at the end of September. I'm, I have read a bit of Ken Follett because he is one of my grandfather's, was one of my grandfather's favorite authors. Um, so I inherited a lot of Ken Follett books from him when he passed away. And so I, I'm honestly, I'm happy to have this. It feels right. It feels nice. It feels like I should read it and then tell my grandfather about it because it's definitely something he would have picked up. I also have The Night House by Joe Nesbo, which came out in uh, late October this year. This is a horror when the voices call, don't answer. While I know it's not at all like it, it, it really reminds me of The Black Phone by Joe Hill, just based on the phone on the cover. There are a couple books that I was like extremely excited for that came out this month that are not popular, which is why I separate them from that first group, but I want you to know about these books. I've mostly read two of them already and I am obsessed with them. So I'm gonna show you these books and then you're gonna go buy them, okay? Thanks. Let's start with my current read. I posted this on my Instagram story the other day and the author uh, replied and, and was really happy that I was reading it, so that was cool. Jones just ran into my tripod. It's The Lies of the Ajungo by Moses Osi Otomi. I don't know if that's right, I apologize. This is a novella from Tor.com. It's only 84 pages, but I'm absolutely loving it uh, so far. It's set in a desert world where there is no water and the main character, a 12 year old boy, has to go and find water to save his city and especially his mother. And also in this world, everyone over the age of 13 has their tongue cut out and the tongues are traded for water. I don't know, I'm really enjoying it so far. Hey, it's Jones. One of my good friends, Gabriella Houston, released The Bone Roots this month. This is a Slavic inspired story of two mothers each trying to protect their child. One of them offers sacrifice to the bone roots of the childbearing tree as a thank you for her gift of a child. And the other is searching for her child who was snatched by a fox spirit as a baby. I'm actually gonna have Gabriella on my channel to talk about this book and her other works a bit later, probably in December. We're still nailing down a date. Gabriella is hilarious and such a fun person to talk to and an amazing writer and her books are fantastic. So I'm really excited to have her on the channel. Stay tuned for more info on that. We also have Loot by Jennifer Thorne. This is a horror book from Tor Nightfire. This is a story about a secluded community on an island um, where every seven summers, seven people die on a specific day. Uh, it's about a mainlander coming to the island and hearing about this ritual and not believing in it, but then that day arrives and it's her experience living through it. Or does she live through it? I don't know, I haven't read it. Lastly, I have The Gin Bot of Shantyport by Samet Basu. This is an Aladdin retelling. It's a sci-fi Aladdin, which is really cool. Retelling is not the right word, I misspoke. It's Aladdin inspired. One human, two robots, three wishes to free the soul of a city. And there's a little, little cyborg monkey on the cover. I'm really excited for it. So yeah, I did it again. I'm really excited for it. Shut up. I love that Jones has joined me for this video. Hi, baby. <laughs> Lastly, I have just compiled a bunch of random books that I got. Big yawn. Big yawn. First, 
The Manor House by Jillian McMillan. Not my genre, not something I would have purchased for myself, but she was the guest of honor at one of the HarperCollins events that I went to for work and we got these for free and she signed it. She signed and personalized it. I don't know if you can see that at all. She was actually very lovely to talk to and this does sound interesting. It's a story of a young couple who win the lottery and get their dream home, but then one day the wife comes home and the husband is dead. Uh, who did it? Who did it, Jones? Next, we have Upon a Frosted Star, which is supposed to be like Swan Lake meets The Great Gatsby. Not my usual genre either as just a general fiction, but it feels very wintry and I was just in the mood for a winter party book. And it's really pretty. I got Beholder by Ryan LaSala. This is a teen book, but apparently it's like very eldritch, which I am a fan of. My copy is misprinted. I really doubt you can see it, but it's misprinted, which was another reason that I, I kind of wanted it. <laughs> it's set in New a New York City penthouse where a party has just happened and everyone is dead, except for the main character. And it's some eldritch nonsense, which we love. I visited Re Reading in downtown Toronto. I went there with Katie and grabbed a couple of books from them. First, I got The Gutter Prayer by Gareth Hanrahan. If you'll remember, Gareth Hanrahan wrote more recently The Sword Defiant, which I did not love. It was okay. Um, and I've also heard The Gutter Prayer is okay, but it's a recent Orbit publish and I got it for $7. So yeah, we got it. Also from Re Reading, bye Jones. I picked up Kushiel's Dart by Jacqueline Carey. This is a weird one. So the reason I bought this, it's very, very old. Very old, semi-popular series. The reason I bought this is because I have a cookbook with a lot of fantasy-inspired meals in it, and I wanna do a video where I cook things from the book and, and show you guys. Um, and a lot of them are from the Kushiel's series, Kushiel's Dart series, <laughs> but I had never heard of it before. So when I saw this at the store, I picked it up. And the man that was working there was like, have you read that series? I was like, no. And he's like, very smutty. And I was like, unexpected, but good to know. Um, so yeah, apparently it's very spicy. I just wanted to make good food. So we'll see how that goes. Lastly, not leastly, I thrifted at a different location this month, but I picked up A Crown for Cold Silver by Alex Marshall. Look how big this is. I've seen this around, but I've never really heard anyone praising it. Maybe that's why I always see it in thrift stores. But it does seem like just a good old classic high fantasy uh, sword and sorcery. All roads lead to war. I bought it. Jones, how many books was that? That's everything I got in November. I'm sorry if this video was a little low energy or just weird. Jones is biting me. If you've read anything that I talked about today, let me know down below. Or if you're going to be buying any of these books, let's buddy read. I'm in the mood for a good old buddy read, you know? Let me know what you want to read with me. Jones, do you want to read a book with me? Before I go, don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell icon so you know when I upload new videos. I upload two days a week. I love you guys. Goodbye. <laughs>